you're all over him. No, I feel like I'm outside. And there you go. And there comes the... Well, is, he's got a bit of bravado there. It doesn't last too long because you're still all over yeah, him. This is like being at JD and they won't take my take my trainers back. This is like, this is it now. Oi, what'd you say, mate? Take my trainers Left hand, back. right hand. <laughs> I mean, he's he's tough because he's staying in there. But I'll, yeah, I'll rate him. It's a lot of volume. Oh, uppercut. that uppercut. And you know what I was saying as well? Look. Wow, wow, sir. And he turns his back. Oh, yeah. So I really wanted to like hurt him. You know yeah. that last one yeah. when you ran off. What I liked is that I, I reflected on my experience in like the Klitschko fight. Mm -hmm. like, you know, this is a this is this is like a what do they call it? In in this is a predator and a prey. Big so uppercut again. Yeah, like we swipe the we swipe the prey here, and we're not gonna let him get away. Yeah. This is my meal. I need to catch it. What's good family? Smash the like button and subscribe. So we just heard there from Anthony the Predator Joshua. Now, what do we know? Listen, I've been saying for the longest time, some people have forgotten because I've been so locked in trying to make a change. In this day and age, or in general, we only, all we've got is our voice. We don't have interaction with these people, so I'm just trying to do the most with the voice. YB's mouth stays doing the most. That said, the underlying principle is, for AJ, in 2021, is exactly what he says. Not just with Pulev. In, these, in this example, he was talking about Pulev and Klitschko. They are food. 100% food. You heard the man. He said, listen, it's a predator and prey thing. And this is my food. Pulev was my food. Klitschko was my food. I couldn't have said it better myself. I think he could have put more snare on it, but that's just me personally speaking. You know what I'm saying? This division is food. And that's what gets me so frustrated. Because it really should be food. People say to me, why be? Why are you always complaining about the training? Why are you always complaining? He knocked the guy out. He's unified, undisputed champion. And that's what you man don't get. He does that, in my opinion... Still not optimum. Still not optimum. And man, it's still food. Do you understand? Why I get frustrated is I think we've got a once in a century type of fighter. I believe, I said it before, I'll say it again. I believe AJ can go historically down as number one all time heavyweight. All time heavyweight. Now, that isn't an easy crown to give. And that's why I'm so insistent that the training needs to lock in with AJ's potential. At the moment, he's chugging along and still going to make the all-time great list. But when you're talking about coming in number one, you need everything to line up. And at the moment, in my opinion, it's not all lining up. And yes, again, people say, well, why be? Look, all of his opponents are food. And they are. But when you've got a lion in... When you've got a lion in a pen full of chickens... That doesn't mean the lion. I don't. You know what? Scrap all the analogy thing, man. Can't be doing. <laughs> can't be doing with dead analogies. Bottom line is, man. AJ, these man are food. Hundred percent food. But it's, it's how it's how you enjoy your meal. I've always said consistently. No matter what happens, we've heard Mike Tyson come out today and say, "Oh, Fury's too quick," and Mr. Fury's too quick," and even though the man got knocked out twice by Wilder, he's too quick. All right then. <laughs> you know, oh well, you know, I'm not sure AJ can hit Fury because Wilder couldn't hit him. Uh? What? Uh? Where was you for the first fight when he got laid out twice? But anyway, I'll do that in a separate video. All these man, whether it's Pulip, Klitschko is better than all them man. I'm sorry. Fury ran from Klitschko. Let's not forget that. Fury ran from Klitschko. Wilder didn't even want to mention Klitschko. Oh man, I'm a baby. I'm a baby. And that's what people aren't quite getting here. Mike Tyson included, just don't get it. I don't care how much of a professional you was or you wasn't. You ain't getting it. The man that Fury went 50-50 with Vlad. Many people thought Vlad won, given his home advantage and given he's the champion. I think, I've said many times before myself, if that had gone to Vlad, it would have been a bit of a, people would have said, oh, robbery, but that would have been it. It wouldn't have been the robbery of the century. It would have been, oh, and everyone would have carried on with their lives. Fury didn't want the rematch. Just look what AJ did to Vlad. And don't give me, oh, oh well, oh, oh, Vladimir, it was 18 months later. 18 months don't make no difference. Especially when you didn't do nothing with him. 
That was, if anything, Vlad was more on it because he was warmed up. That Fury fight was a warm up. That got his legs, that got his, that got him energized, and that's why the rematch would have been interesting. But anyway, let's stick to the topic. If you want proof that today's opponents are food, statistical empirical proof. Just look at the boxing triangles here. Fury fights Vlad the next day. Vlad's chomping at the bit to get in there, begging for the rematch. He signed immediately. AJ goes in there, whoops him from pillar to post. And arguably, that was one of AJ's worst nights as well. If you actually look at the performance, he gassed out after four rounds and he was... You know what I'm saying? That wasn't his best day. That was one of AJ's worst performances. Looking, Obviously, it was pivotal in his career because actually from that point, he became a lot more disciplined. Now, I, in my opinion, he's, he's gone a bit too far the other way now, but that's him on there. For today's video, the point is, listen, on AJ's worst night, or one of, certainly that fight, that Vlad fight, strategically and everything else, his conditioning, he was 255 pounds, overweight, etc, etc, all them factors in, that was, that's in AJ's bottom, bottom quartile, that's in his bottom 25% of his performances. If you looked at all of AJ's career performances, the Vlad fight would certainly be in the bottom half. So in AJ's... In one of AJ's worst nights, he whoops a man. Never mind the actual. Oh well, it went to eleven rounds. That doesn't. That's not. That's not what. It, that is not what's important. What's important is the, the long-term psychological effect of that performance. Because in the ring, you can say, "Well, look, he didn't put him out cold. It wasn't that bad." Or well, it went, he went eleven rounds and Vlad. The fact of the matter is, did Vlad had a free. 20 30 million pound opportunity literally free he could have just jumped in there and took it and rolled over not for nothing did vlad want to go in there all he had to do was turn up he, and that's the crazy thing this is how devastating that performance was to vladimir klitschko's psychology he'd already lost it's not like for example yeah let's say vlad had won that fight and it was close that's kind of understandable him not wanting to do it again because he's kind of thinking well it was a hard fight and I'm not sure I can do better next time. But think think of this. He's already lost. So it wouldn't have been a big shock for him to lose again. But still, despite there being no pressure, he had nothing to lose going into the rematch. He'd already been beat. He'd already been stopped. That didn't that's even then, even under them circumstances where he had nothing to lose and literally 30 million to gain, and the opportunity and the opportunity to actually win, it was all upside for Vlad. How could it have got worse for Vlad? Okay, he got stopped again. Well, he, that wouldn't have been a shock. He got stopped the first time. So everything he had was to gain. He could have won. He could have perhaps gone the distance this time. Think of it from his point of view. If anything, I'd have trained him and said, you know what, Vlad? Or in, in his mind, he should have been thinking, look, I made it 11 rounds and I was in there exchanging with the younger man who's a better inside fighter. This time, why don't I go in there and just box, to, box on the jab and try and survive? Safety first, go back to my old way. Safety first and get through. And at least then, I'll end my career on a loss still, but it'll be a, well, look, he did better than the first time. And plus 30 million. That there, all of the things I've just explained, and the fact he threw all of that away and said, no way, I don't care, I don't want to be anywhere near that guy. That's what he said. The Fury fight was for less money as well. The Fury fight was for less money, and Vlad was straight in there, begging for it. All over it like a bad rash. The AJ fight comes around, he gets whooped on AJ's one of AJ's worst performances, or certainly a below average performance, and Vlad says, no way, I don't care what you're offering, I don't care how much upside I've got, I don't care about going out on my career with a win or with a, a better loss, a points decision loss, I don't want no part of it. Wow, that there sums up the differential between AJ and all the other man here. Because Wilder, again, Wilder didn't even want to go in there with Vlad, do you understand? That same man who don't want to be nowhere near AJ, Wilder wouldn't go in there with... It's, it's like a crazy triangle thing. AJ's right at the top. AJ's devastating people who other people below them don't want no problems with, do you understand? AJ's murking people who... Wilder, don't want no part of. Fury, didn't want no part of a rematch. Never mind the actual straight 
comparison, i.e. AJ versus Wilder, we don't even get to that point. Because, it's not, and to be honest, it's no surprise that Wilder didn't want to fight AJ. He didn't want to fight the man who AJ whooped. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> That's the mental maths here. Again, even with Fury. Look at Fury. Fury, it's no shock that Fury, we're, it's no shock that, that AJ and Fury fight isn't looking like it's going to work out because Fury didn't want to rematch the man that AJ whooped. Which says it all, really, doesn't it? It's no shock now, all of a sudden, if you... Oh, well, oh, oh, well, um, venue, oh, C-19, oh, oh, yes, well, oh. Oh, well, the venue, oh, all oh, the fighters, oh. It's, no, it's not the fighters, oh. All this kind of business. So, that old analogy I tried to use about... It's, a, it's like a lion in the pen with hens. That's what it is. That's AJ's capability. The current crop today, it's just easy pickings. And AJ explains that. It's predator. There's no. Like, do you think it's chance? We know AJ isn't. Well, people may argue this, but we know. There's no. AJ isn't someone who's a trash talker. So when he used that, oh, it's like predator and pay. It's like predator and prey. And their man of food. It's like food. That wasn't because he's sat there like Conor McGregor or Tyson Fury and thought of some lyric to drop. That's genuinely how his mind's perceiving things. These men are food. But what AJ's missing at the moment, and I'm not going to turn this into one of them videos, I've done plenty of them already, but what AJ's missing is, that's his mindset, that's his true self. This isn't, again, again, that, the words we've heard there of AJ explaining the food he's consuming in his fights, that's not him doing that because of bravado. It's not a McGregor special or a Fury special. Genuinely, he perceives his opponents as food. But what's missing currently, in my opinion, is he doesn't have a trainer who has that same level of perception. Shane McGuigan, just quickly, Shane McGuigan said to Akoli, before Akoli had even thought about stopping the fight against Glowowski, Shane McGuigan said to him, now's the time, put, put your foot on the gas, he's ready to go. Before Akoli hadn't even con contemplated stopping Glowowski, and McGuigan was the one to initiate it. Compare it now to AJ and, AJ and McGregor. Um, McCrappen. McCrappen, don't say nothing. The whole fight is happy. All he'll say is, stay behind the jab, stay behind the jab. At not one point does he say, my man's ready to go. Pula's ready to go. It's always AJ initiating. And it ends up that, I feel like, when you've got, the reason AJ looks like he's stuck between two places is because he is. His nature is, these men are food. And that's why you saw him exploding in the second or third round and exploding in the tenth. And there was very little transition in between because his instinct kicks in as it should, but then every three rounds he gets broken up by his trainer saying, calm down, calm down, get back, get back behind the jab. So it's like every time he starts to build momentum and start as he used to do, he'd go in there and just set pace and build. Now every three minutes he's getting reset again and going back to what he was going back to what McCracken's orders are. And that's what's missing at the moment. When we get that double lineup, that double whammy, AJ's instinct multiplied. Trainers add value. Look at McGuigan. Adding value, compounding, yeah, multiplying your original fighter. That's what real Hall of Famer trainers do. They multiply their fighter's efficiency. Look at Akoli. That's what you call multiplication. He went from being good for nothing. Yes, he had the natural attributes, but he, no one didn't want to watch it, and it was no good. He weren't stopping no one. Boring. Now, he's firing on all kinds of cylinders, and that's within a few months. We're not talking about five years down the line. Meanwhile, it's the opposite. AJ, in his own mind, as we've heard, these men are food. As we've seen, that in that that literal, it's, it's actually a good analogy is used there, and that's what really proves that it's really his mentality, because he's not a bravado talker subconsciously he really does feel like he's man of food and that's why his natural instinct that natural food predator prey instinct was kicking in in the in the, in the third round that wasn't like an order that, that certainly worked mccracken saying yo go get him in the third round it was a natural instinct of ah, he's wanting to go and i think that's why sometimes as well we see aj overdoing it throwing loads of hooks to the guy he's just he's just raring to go he just rock hard he wants to you know what I'm he reminds me of like a dog in um a dog in heat is that, a, is that a female? I don't know, but either way, it's just buzzing. Yeah? 
Just ready to go. Got, got his lipstick out. One of them ones, yeah? Just raring for it. And then you've got McCracken. And in some occasions, people argue, well, sometimes you need yin and yang. No, you don't. In this day and age, the best example is Mike Tyson and Cust Custy Amato. They're the best example. Mike was naturally ferocious. And then he compounded that with skills and temperament. You never saw Mike go in there and just go mad and reckless. Like the casuals think... That's what casual, casuals think of Mike Tyson as a brawler, but we know that he was much more one of the most higher level boxers in the whole history of, of boxing, offensively speaking at least. That's what you need. Someone who appreciates the beauty of the game. Not just winning, not just surviving, but enabling AJ's, that inner predator prey in us, yeah, that inner food in us, that inner... You really want to turn your... You really want to turn your opponents into mincemeat. Yeah, food's good, but we want mincemeat. That's what we really want. Turn them into dog food. Mushed all up. <laughs> yeah. At the moment, McCracken's got AJ turning his opponents into some a la carte thing. Yeah. Some a la carte thing where it's all nice and we want we want the mincemeat. We want the dog food. The cheap dog food. And even real meat. Just plastic and things. That's what we want to see. All mushed up. Not even a bit of niceness about it. And clearly... What he's saying, his actions in the ring. In fact, he's ready. He's he's ready to explode on a moment's notice. If it was really AJ's temperament to be, or if AJ's temperament was really thriving under McCracken, we wouldn't see this differential. We'd see, we'd see something like Andre Ward. Andre Ward won't explode, and no one at no point. Just pure box to orders. That works well. If you see what I mean, for that kind of fire, that kind of temperament. AJ, I've been saying it for the longest time, he has that, ah, he has it about him. And it's a rare, and what frustrates me again, he, a lot of the time, is the fact that he's got these things. He's got all of, all of these elite attributes and these, this elite um, innate instinct. Most people don't have that. They just want to be trot along and and be whatever it is. And that's not a knock on now, I'm just saying, we've got it. And it needs to be, fr uh, it needs to be enhanced and brought out and to flourish not push back and i feel like my kraken's always just trying to push it back into a hole oh no food predator prey no 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 get rid of that just stay behind the jab and let's keep it boring for some fighters that's what they need because they're no good aj's got in every single area of being a fighting machine he ticks every box and people sometimes confuse the fact that because he's success success doesn't mean peak Success doesn't mean he's reached, he's reached his possibility. The fact AJ's making McCracken look good, essentially. Oh, well, it's got people telling me, oh, well, he's, he's about to be undisputed. Yeah, that doesn't mean that he's at his best. AJ would have been undisputed dancing around the place because that's how great he is, and that's the point. He's an all-rounder. I've been saying it for, eight, for years. AJ's like Mike Tyson, Lennox Lewis hybrid. The best of both, in my opinion. Train the right way will be the best of both. Slam bid, slam bang, slap bang in the middle. And yes, Lennox Lewis was vicious as well, but and it was just a different type of. You never saw Lennox Lewis go in there, yeah, and just start opening up. Look what AJ did against Pulev. That's rawness. That's raw, ready to goness. That's that Mike Tysonness. Lennox didn't have that. At no point in your career do you see Lennox. And I'm not saying it looked pretty on AJ. It didn't. It's not effective. But that's because he's his trainer. You know, Shane McGuigan would take that rawness rattling off eight shots in a row for a heavyweight. Are you mad? There ain't 147 pounders don't throw eight shots in a row and four uppercuts in a row. And yes, it didn't translate well, but it's that raw, it's that instinct. And that, ah, that's what's rare. And under Shane McGuigan, he'll harness that into AJ putting together four or five shots, but in the right places, not just rattling off hook after hook after hook and it not, and not, and it not doing no damage or rattling off four uppercuts. McGuigan will refine that, not take it away and push it in the corner like McCracken does, try and hide it, cover it up. It's going to come out, and that's what we see with AJ. If AJ wasn't, didn't have them instincts, he wouldn't be, you wouldn't be seeing it. You'd see him go through the 10 rounds and it'd just be one pace, or it'd just be one type of way. AJ couldn't even contain it after two rounds. It was oozing out of him it wants to come out you can't these people's temperament and people's like these these psychological elements 
They were within people. You ain't going to change someone's nature. It's like a dog. You have some mad dogs, and other not mad dogs. You don't... Yes, you can train them. Yeah, you can get a good dog trainer, but ultimately, that stuff never goes. And that's why I believe, I'm not sure, I'm not a dog specialist, but sometimes they put certain dogs down because they say, well, it's too far gone. Or, or sorry, they sometimes they end the dog's lineage because it's just too mad. And I'm not saying, obviously, that's not AJ, but I'm, the point is, there's a curve to it. And AJ's on the side of the curve where it needs to come out. And he's got the attributes to do it. If you're six foot ten and you're lanky and spindly and whatnot, then it's no good you being ferocious. You need to be put down. But in AJ's overall ability and overall genetics, it's perfect. It's a perfect fighting machine. Yes, he can outbox Fury on the back foot if he wants. 100%. I've been saying that. Even if it comes to a boxing match, I'm back in AJ. Is that the best way you win? No. I believe he can stop Fury. And that's what I want to see. I want to see AJ go in there at his best, at his true peak, and just open Fury up. And clearly, given what we're hearing here, given the, the performances we're seeing, that's what AJ subconsciously wants to do as well. Or even consciously, he's, he's communicating it himself.